Hello students, in this video we shall understand two new concepts. The first one is constructor chaining and the next one is method overriding. As you can see uh, within uh, this first screen that I have, I am having two classes. First is your one and I have extended a new class two which is extended from one class. So I am having a derived class, I am having a base class. The base class is having a variable x and it is having this main method which is exactly not needed because we don't need to actually see this concept uh, with respect to main. We need to understand how the chaining of constructors is done and next what happens if I try to derive a new class from another class and create the derived class object. So what happens with the constructor of a derived class? So these are the few things that we need to understand. So we'll understand them one by one. Number one is your constructor chaining. Now what exactly do we mean? Constructor chaining is a concept where we actually make use of constructor overloading. So let us create few constructors in class one. We know that the constructors are of multiple types this constructor that I have just created this is a default zero argument constructor let us create one another constructor with one argument x so how do we actually assign this x to my original x so we know that this x is a local variable and this x is a data member so how can I assign this x to this x We'll have to make use of one very important keyword in Java language that is called as this. This is a keyword that always represents the reference to the current object. So we always can write this dot and access all the properties and methods. Like I can write this dot x and it's equal to x. So this way you can assign this x to this x. Let us create one another variable and Let's create one more constructor out of it. What if, if my constructor is having two arguments? So this way I can make use of this dot x is equal to x and this dot y is equal to y. So I am having three constructors ready before me. Now how can I actually create an object? So now if suppose I create my object like this is equal to new one now how do we like if I pass on for example if I pass on this without saying anything so I didn't pass any value to my constructor while I'm constructing this so what ha what will happen it will definitely try to call this constructor right and this constructor is not doing anything. So what I want to do is I want to say that if any object is created without passing any value, this should call the another constructors. Now, how can I call this constructor or this one directly within from this? So I can make use of this dot, make use of this and by passing the value. For example, I pass on 10, 10. And after then, let us create one function in order to just check on whether the values are being exactly passed or not. And let us print the values. X plus plus one and let us run this program now for now making use of this display function let us run this program we are getting 10 and 10 so that means what happened when I did not pass any value to my constructor, it actually 
called this default constructor and this default constructor in turn made a chain of calling another constructor now this is called as constructor chaining and through this this method so this is being used in two ways so this was earlier used in order to access the properties as well as now that i'm calling this this method in order to call the another constructor from a an existing constructor so this is the call we must always remember now once i actually call upon this one class to be created as a base class for this class 2 and i create an object of class 2 let us see what happens let's copy this method and we go to this class 2 and try to create an object to ob is equal to new 2 see i am doing what i am just creating another object no not making any great changes compile this program your two dot class is ready let's run it as you run this you will see the marvelous output now this java 2 is doing what java 2 is saying this object has been created but what has happened so once you actually created this object nothing has got printed because you have not written anything so exactly did it say anything so let us actually write one statement here too so that you may actually see what has actually happened constructor caught let's run it again and you will see so this statement should be the first statement always whenever you make use of this this statement this should be the very first statement in the constructor if we don't adhere to the same you will be reminded so as you say and let us run this java 2 now can you see this once you run you are running this class 2 and you are creating the object of class 2 the constructor of 1 is executed is it and now can you get x and y with respect to ob can i say ob dot display so can i do it first first just check it whether i can make a call to this display function with respect to ob because this display is a function which is present and is having default access modifier definitely it will be inherited and it will be made possible and accessible to this two class so this also is possible let us now run this class 2 again so this is exactly doing what making a rule for this constructor now this is printed now what exactly the rule is so the rule is whenever any object they should always remember whenever you create an object of derived class the constructor of the base class base class gets executed automatically you know and what has happened exactly in base class the base class was exactly already chained chain means you created an object of two class and in turn it made a call to this default constructor and this default constructor in turn made a call to another constructor so this is a, a chain of constructors which has exactly happened so you are not only making this constructor of different classes made accessible within the class 2 you are making a chain so let us see one more keyword that is used in derived classes so let us see what if if i create a constructor within 
your derived class. Let us create this derived class constructor. And this derived class constructor is also suppose overloaded. And what you are passing, you are passing integer x and y into both of them. Now, now what I am trying to do is I am trying to create this two object by passing certain new values. Suppose I am passing 5 comma 5. So what will happen is you are calling an explicitly a constructor of this derived class that means this constructor is called. Now what I want is I want this x and y should be passed on to the properties x and y of its own. Now this particular class does not have its x and y. So this x and y should be passed on to this base class. And this two dot two is constructor actually make a call to the base class constructor which is already present here like this. So can you directly call the constructor or explicitly call the constructor of your base class by being present in the derived class. So here you can use a keyword that is called as super. So you can pass on x and y to super method and what this super method will do? Super method will make a call to a base constructor. A base class constructor is already there with two arguments so that will execute. So let us see how it works. Let us compile the program and let us run it. As you see, the output is 5 comma 5. That means you are able to pass on this 5 comma 5 to the base class properties which are already there, like this. This x and y. So this is called as the constructor chaining from within the class as well as from derived class to the base class. So here in this video, we had understood the concept of this as well as super. We'll meet in the next video to understand the concept of method overriding. Thank you very much.